and welcome to Is This Good? The show where we boldly, conclusively, and scientifically decide what things in this big wide world are good. I'm Ed Austin, and with me, as always, is production powerhouse Jason Doyle. Hello! Hi, JD. Great to have you here. And today, it's a podcasting BOGO! That's right. We have two amazing guests. They're writers. They're comedians. They're NBA podcasters obsessed with corrupt owners, fake ad reads, fully committed song parodies, and the tweets of one Frankie Muniz. From Round Ball Rock, it's Joey Devine and Sean Keen. Joey and Sean, welcome to Is This Good? Hey, Matt. Thanks so much for having us. And JD. Bo- we got a, a bonus starter. I thought I was just getting Matt, <laughs> but we also got JD. That's right. That's, That's right. right. And everyone else is here in spirit. Great to be here, fellas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's important what you just did there, Sean, because now people know what your voice sounds like <laughs> and people know what Joey's voice sounds like. So already we're killing the mm-hmm. podcast game. Right. Um, as I mentioned, you guys host Round Ball Rock, which for a basketball podcast is surprisingly hard to describe um Mm -hmm. i would say that like in the best possible way i would describe it as you guys are doing things that genuinely make you laugh and then hoping that other people Mm -hmm. will come (laughs) along for the ride we once Uh, got a negative review that said all these guys do is read wikipedia to each other and laugh (laughs) (laughs) um which Pretty good description. It stings Um. a little bit, yeah, but that's supposed to be a bad thing. Some of the best times in my life have been reading people Wikipedia articles and laughing. Just reading Michael Rappaport's character names to each other was maybe, that's like an entire episode. That was a little indulgent, but you know, I mean. Maybe quickly, could you guys tell me how you guys met and how that led to starting your podcast? We met doing stand-up comedy in San Francisco in the worst bars in the world in Mm -hmm. the early 2000s. Um, And then we briefly had... We had a short-lived sketch group together called Frownland. Mm -hmm. Uh We had two um, performances. That did two shows in two years. (laughs) Um, But yeah, our friend... Sean and I didn't know each other. And our friend Kevin O'Shea put us together... Uh, in that sketch group. And then Sean and I have just been, like, best friends ever since. One question <laughs> I had is, you did a series where you reviewed every Shaquille O'Neal-endorsed product. Uh, as we know, he's he's got a ton of them. It's he's still got, like, going on. Oh, it's still going on. Okay, so, <laughs> oh, yeah. like, there's Soda Shack, there's Icy Hot, there's the General Insurance. I believe he was even um, promoted to Chief Fun Officer at Carnival Cruises. So, what, what's in the lead so far is what I'd like to know. I mean, we haven't reviewed the chair yet that he endorses at Office Depot, but uh, we do have our, our friend podcaster slash basketball coach, Dave Dufour, has one and uses it every day. So I don't – the problem is I don't want to actually buy the chair. I just want to, uh-huh. like – I need to just have some time by myself where I can sit in it at Office Depot and not get kicked out. So I need to do that for the next collab coming up. Um, We do have to review that we both ordered a shakaroni pizza within the past month, too. Oh, is that a Papa John, I'm guessing? Uh It's a Papa John. It was, spoiler alert, it's one of the worst pizzas I've ever eaten in my entire life. Um. What, What makes it a shakaroni? It has a lot of pepperoni and it's large and cheap, okay. I guess. Like, it's like larger, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Much like Shaquille O'Neal's endorsement itself, this pizza can be easily bought. But yeah, they definitely. <laughs> it. What it reminded me of actually is when you fly the cheapest airline possible and they just have no frills whatsoever because they know they're the cheapest. That is the mentality of the shakaroni pizza. Like you probably get maybe like more pizza by volume than almost anywhere else. And they know that they don't have to deliver anything else except like the, the literal food to go into your stomach. It doesn't need to have like flavor or anything. So like, like spirit airlines, this pizza, it'll get you there. It'll, it'll fill you up, but it will feel terrible the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you wanted something good, you would have to pay a little bit extra. Not even good. Just (laughs) tolerable. (laughs) Uh, another question.
push that has you guys are watching something called Special Forces World's Toughest mm-hmm. Test. We are. This is a, yeah. a, a reality show where celebrities are, uh, I guess, yelled at by ex Special Forces operatives um, as the contestants compete in a SEAL team style boot camp. The participants are people like Dwight Howard. I assume that's why you started watching it mm-hmm. because yes. of the NBA time. Uh, we got Jamie Lynn Spears. We got Kate Gosselin, Dr. Drew Pinsky, and. Anthony Scaramucci. So obviously, we sent our most capable yeah. warriors <laughs> yeah. um, for this competition. Uh, can you give us an update on the show? Who, who's who's winning? Who do you think is going to win? And and just what the hell is it? What happens on this show? Um, basically, well, what mainly happens is uh, celebrities get yelled at uh, for like. By a British sports special forces people, oh, like okay. half of them are British, which so it's like a weird, like Gordon Ramsay makes you do push ups vibe in the it's desert. It's very uh, um, kitchen nightmares. Yeah, Danny Amendola is obviously the favorite. We're we're a few episodes behind because <laughs> that is how we roll on our podcast. <laughs> There's this bachelorette whose name I cannot Hannah remember Brown is her name ever Joey because they rarely ever Hannah Brown. <laughs> she so in the first 30 seconds of the show they put the like uh abu Ghraib black bags on their heads like zero dark 30 <laughs> the, the uh, it's on fox bags. yeah it's on exactly fox. yeah <laughs> yeah this the syriana bag um and they when they took them off every celebrity looked like they were the scaredest they've ever been in their entire lives except for this little like five foot three bachelorette and i was like that girl is winning this show in the first 30 (laughs) seconds and that's proved to be this uh we're we're three episodes in and i would say that's proved to be the case thus far okay it sounds like you guys need to sit your ass down in a shack office depot chair and (laughs) really do and it also really (laughs) explains dwight howard's whole basketball career because the seals kind of pretend like they don't know who he is and then there's <laughs> moments where someone just starts yelling like, look at you, you're so strong, why can't you do anything? Stop <laughs> laughing, you're farting all the time. Like, like, I thought you were a leader, you're a clown. And and you're like, I can, every basketball coach he's ever had has been in that exact same moment. They just haven't been able to like throw him in the water afterwards, you know? There's only seven people left on the show and we are three episodes in. Dr. Drew got sent home for not drinking water uh-huh. in the first 20 minutes of yeah. the episode. He was dehydrated. Well, because you know if there's anything that uh, doctors would recommend to do, Dr. <laughs> Drew would not do it. Yeah, exactly. He seems, he seems like he's very – he, like, wants to pull the ripcord, like, right away. And he even makes sure that he's constantly going like, so there's uh, there's water? Can we fill, fill up all these water bottles? Just so like a couple hours later, he could be like, so thirsty. I'm not quitting. I have to be taken away. The best part of the show is you can tell each celebrity has thought ahead of time what excuse they're going to use when they leave this show. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so like... <laughs> Jamie Lynn Spears was like they made them like jump about 20 feet out of a helicopter and like she immediately was like I miss my daughter I miss my daughter <laughs> <laughs> Chef Tyler Florence they had to do like a thing where they like were on a rope and Chef Tyler Florence said today's my wife's birthday <laughs> <laughs> and I pro- <laughs> and when I came on this show, I promised my wife I wouldn't do anything to put myself in danger. So I'm bowing out. <laughs> wow. They're like, "All right, cool, dude." But like, by the time we get you down from here yeah. and like sign all the paperwork, you're not getting home in time for your They're wife's birthday. They're in Jordan. They're, literally They're in Jordan. In They're, Jordan. Yeah, been... Oh, <laughs> he's missing the birthday. Oh, they're Jeez. literally at a at a black site. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that's Special Forces World's Toughest <laughs> Test. I'm going to guess that's a, a general not good. Um, but uh, before we start, quick bit of housekeeping. If you have topics for a future show, email us at isthisgoodpod at gmail.com. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok at isthisgoodpod. Subscribe on YouTube and review us on Apple Podcasts. Last week I said there were no reviews on Apple Podcasts. I was mistaken. 
I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> it will it will keep me up Wait, at night. How many reviews were you off, Matt? I was off. I was there off were by no reviews. Are yeah. there like a thousand? Reviews oh, oh no, 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 no! It's sorry. every week. No new reviews. Oh, okay. in that week. Right. In that week. Thank God. Okay. Please leave more though. Please leave more so that there's no doubt. Don't leave any doubt that there aren't new reviews. Make it so obvious that even if I don't click, you know, on filter by new reviews, I'll still see them. Uh, and remember, as always, please tell a friend or family member about the show. Why? Because you're the main character. <laughs> All right. The premise of the show is very simple. I'm going to give you a topic. You tell me if it's good. Here we go. At Philippe T23 asks, casinos, are they good? Now, this is a pretty broad topic, but I thought it would be a good one for you guys because I know from listening to your show that every year you go to NBA Summer League where all the, the rookies play against each other, and you have a meetup, and that meetup is at the Tillman Fertitta slot machine in, I believe, the Golden Nugget. So I know mm -hmm. you have a lot of experience True. with casinos. Um, Tillman Fertitta, of course, is the owner of the Houston Rockets and the owner of the Bubba Gump uh, Shrimp Company. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe A place I worked at for eight years. Oh, so wow. is, that, is that where the source of the obsession with Tillman Fertitta is? Yeah. Okay, so he didn't own it for the majority of the time that I worked there. He okay. only owned it, like, in the last two years. I was a waiter at for four years at the one in Monterey and four years at the one in San Francisco. Okay, um, Monterey, that's, that's, that's by the beach. That must be a really good Bubba Gump. I mean, it's right next to the aquarium, so it's yeah. beautiful. Um, <laughs> the aquarium to Bubba Gump Pipeline. San Francisco Bay is known for its fresh fish. <laughs> the, the, the Monterey Bay Aquarium is. Re it was really funny, actually. Is like uh, really into like sustainability, and they'll hand out little guides to everyone when they leave that are like, "This is what you order when you're ordering uh, seafood." And people would come with the little books, and I'd be like, everything we serve here is in their no zone. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all frozen from Thailand and farmed. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I, I didn't realize Bubba Gump served shark fin soup. But, yeah. <laughs> but what, anyway, what so when Tillman Fertitta took, bought Bubba Gump's, the first thing he did was he started charging everyone $5 to have an employee discount. So when he bought the Houston Rockets on our podcast, I was like, this is bad news for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how he became, uh, I would say, the star of our podcast, uh, in a way. <laughs> is the Tillman for Tia slot machine, does it, is it like his face mm -hmm. on it? So he had a show that was canceled on CNBC called The Billion Dollar Buyer, oh. um, where he would be like... He'd be like, I heard about this artisanal honey place. I'm going to go check it out. <laughs> and then it would be like this small woman making honey. And he'd be like, my restaurants buy more honey than 20% of the entire world. Well, we buy 20% of the United States' honey. And I want us, you to start making our honey. And then this poor woman with like who owns this honey company with like three people in it would be like, dying to make way more honey than she's ever produced in her entire life while he yelled at her. <laughs> it was, like, not a popular show, but there is a bank of about 15 slot machines in every one of his casino that are billion-dollar buyer-themed. They're slowly hiding them. Um, <laughs> they've been, they've <laughs> been moving really into the suburbs of the, uh, the, the slot machine <laughs> environment. <laughs> Yeah, they are no longer in a popular place of the casino at the no, Golden Nugget. We had to so. really look. Okay, last one time. of these days, one of these <laughs> days, we're going to show up and they're going to be gone. And I guess I'm just going to have to tweet meetup canceled. Because <laughs> <laughs> what you're going to call a casino to ask if that slot machine exists? <laughs> How do you call a casino? Like. <laughs> <laughs> That's, so you're going to go back next year, they're just going to all be replaced by the Big Bang Theory uh, slot machines. So. I mean, that would be better, but we know someone who won a million dollars on a Big Bang Theory slot machine. What, four Bazingas? Uh, four it's Bazingas. nine Bazingas, I think. It's oh, way wow. more than four, because you, oh. you play four games, so it's 12 Bazingas. 
Wow. 12 bazingas. That's a lot that's of bazingas, wow. dude. That's more bazingas than I ever thought. And he thought the machine was broken. And then what happened to him when he won that much money is they have to, like, check. And he, they they roped him off with caution tape, and he had to sit at this slot machine that was frozen, just flashing, like, jackpot or whatever, for two and a half hours while they checked with whatever slot machine company. That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> because yeah. they were like, they were like um, you told us this would never pay out, and yet someone has won a million dollars. All right. So, Sean, what, what's your general feeling about casinos? So I, I have... Positive? Negative? Are you excited when you're in them? I, I'm usually pretty into them, even though I feel like I'm a bad gambler. Um, I did do very well on an extremely confusing Lord of the Rings slot machine this year at Summer League, so I can't... <laughs> be a total hater uh-huh. but when thinking about this question i did it did become clear that anyone who owns a slot machine who owns a casino is bad like there aren't mm-hmm. there aren't any good casino <laughs> owners there's like steve Wynn stole that gold medal from jason kidd uh it's <laughs> everyone in the movie casino is a bad guy um <laughs> you know, it's built by it's run by the mafia or the Fertitta family, <laughs> or the Fertitta family that was in the Galveston, Texas Mafia. So it's like it's hard for me to say that all of the worst people are producing a good thing. You know, ironically, the Trump Casino in Vegas doesn't have a it doesn't have a casino. The Trump Hotel doesn't mm-hmm. have a casino. Oh yeah. So there's maybe the worst of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but even he's like, casinos? Uh, that's I don't a, know. a step <laughs> too far. Uh, I don't know. I guarantee the reason that is is you have to pay the state a license to have a casino, and he just didn't want to pay it. Okay, J.D., what do you think? Because I, if I remember correctly, last summer when we were in Las Vegas, you're so bad at gambling that you won a bet, uh, a, a sports bet, and yeah. didn't even realize that you'd won. That's true. Yeah, I made a bet. I had had a few pops, as we like to say. Uh, I bet on Wimbledon, women's Wimbledon final. Uh, And I thought that I had parlayed it or something. Uh, Anyways, I ended up winning. Didn't realize that I had won. The the final Wimbledon, which I thought I had bet on, uh, was happening after we left. So I was like, how am I going to collect on this bet? Because I bet that this person would, uh, would advance. And she did, and then I thought that I had bet for her to win the whole thing, Uh but I had only made the initial bet, so I was able to cash in. But yeah, I'm terrible at I'm terrible at gambling. I don't like to gamble. I've been to summer league, I think seven times, Matt. Correct me if I'm wrong. Something like that, six or seven times. Um, Spent way more time in a casino than I care to ever, but. I'm I'm gonna say they're good because if you don't gamble, they're just the most fascinating places. I love the trickery of them. I love the the way they're designed to keep you there. The predatoriness is yes, it's evil, but I love it. I love. Mm. You're saying you gotta respect the hustle. Exactly. I, I, res- I definitely respect the hustle. They always smell great, even if like people are smoking like chimneys in there, and they always smell awesome. Except for the Hooters one, that doesn't smell that great. But uh, but the <laughs> but Cosmo that's part sounds of the Hooters vibe. That's true. Yeah. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I just find them fun to be in. But as long as you don't gamble, just don't gamble. That's all. It, it is true because I actually do find it's one. Like I don't understand people that enjoy watching other people play video games, for instance. But right. I think it is fun to watch your friend gamble when they're on a on a heater at the craps table, and you know. The pageantry of shaking the dice and blowing on them. It, it's, it's exciting. You get wrapped up in it. And it's, it is free entertainment. You're probably getting a free drink. And I yeah. think the fact that you could smoke in there, you know, I don't smoke. But when I'm there, I'm like, maybe I'll have a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like I'm on an airplane in the 70s. It's, yeah, that's it's, right. it's, it's such a fun uh, little novelty. I, I've, I've smoked cigars in the Cosmo before. <laughs> Just walking around smoking a full-on stogie. With yeah, a roof and, and you don't smoke head. cigars. <laughs> no, with a <laughs> exactly. exactly. I go to summer league every year, and I have gone every year since 2010, the decision mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. Yeah, that was before we were like the only fans there. It was really weird. Um. Anyway, uh, 
and I have had people tell me, and it's kind of embarrassing, I gotta say, this is the happiest I have ever seen you. Uh, I'm sort of a miserable person unless I am smoking a cigarette at a craps table. Um, and I love playing craps, but... I love casinos. I'm at home in a casino. Nothing is more fun to me than walking around a casino looking for a slot machine with the worst IP possible to put $20 <laughs> in. And I want the loudest slot machine possible. My favorite slot machine of all time is the 1960s Batman slot machine, which had somehow had like... Dolby Atmos in it. It was so loud, <laughs> and mm -hmm. it would just play the Batman theme song at full volume for as long as there was money in it. It was the best. And if you got, like, a jackpot, would it go, like, kapow! Yes! Oh, okay, well, And then it great. would also show, constantly show, like, goofy clips from the show. So it would be like, you got the Riddler bonus! And then it would be, like, Frank Gorshin being like, oh, <laughs> I'm a weirdo! <laughs> <laughs> okay, and for that reason yeah. alone, casinos are good. No, but I was going to say they're bad. I oh, love a casino, oh, but they're bad. Oh, wow. What a journey. What a journey. <laughs> like, I look, I'm a scumbag. They're for me. Uh, don't don't pretend that it's like a good thing. These these are for mm. these are for the people in the who belong in the dirt. Mm, and I'm a okay. dirt person. <laughs> That's probably why I like them. I'm a scumbag yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you're you're the you're the old weathered vet sitting uh -huh. in like the the shittiest dive bar <laughs> when like some cute girl wanders in and and you walk up to her and say, "Kid, this place ain't for you." <laughs> <laughs> and he's doing that to NBA rookies. <laughs> Scoot, <laughs> scoot, <laughs> this place ain't for you. You're better than this. 50.5% of people say casinos are good. Okay, so that's pretty wow. close. It's about I'm as close, close as you can get yeah. on is this good. All right, moving on to the next topic. JmanXG asks, naming an inanimate object. Is this good? So, like, let's say you name your car, you name your boat, as I'm sure we all have boats, so we've all named our boats. <laughs> um... I, I had a lot of people on Twitter saying when I when I put up this poll, they were like, I was about to vote no, it's not good when I read, uh, is it good to name your car or your boat? But then I read sword because I put that as an option too. And then mm -hmm. they were like, that's yeah, my you, favorite part that you yep. put that option. You got to name, you got to name your sword. Mm -hmm. um, so Sean, let's start with you. What's your gut reaction to this? Naming an inanimate object. Is it good? Uh, I think, I think it's definitely good. This is like an un, this is a unquestioned good for me. I'm always bad at being consistent about naming, like, my car. And I always wish I... Because I try to be too clever, and then it's not useful. Like, if you name your car, it's got to just be, like, one word to be simpler. But uh, I had a... I used to drive a Volkswagen Passat, and I called it uh, mm -hmm. the Commissar. And then I felt really uncomfortable... <laughs> Saying like the commissar arrived. Because you gave something. your car the a, a Nazi name. Yeah, well, I mean it was a, it was a Kraftwerk name, but yeah, yeah, it was not a great idea. And then uh, my current car, I I let a child name it, and and she declared that the car should be named Baby Beluga, and that's not a good name for a car <laughs> at all. It's not mm -hmm. the right color. It's a red uh, Hyundai. You know, it's not. That classy. So uh, I, I just wish I was better at naming inanimate objects. But I don't, I don't even. Th I think even like okay, naming a sword is unquestionably good. Why not give your best chef knife a name too? Like that's the closest you're probably going to come <laughs> oh, to wielding a fancy blade. So yeah, like like that's also it, it's kind of efficient from the 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 kitchen to be like. Yeah, you should use the Widowmaker uh, when you're when you're making <laughs> that stew. Uh, but uh, you know, honey, it, can you pass me the can you pass me the bringer of light? Please? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Add that to your life. You have to use you. It's the only time you're going to be using a blade. So name your razor something. You know, go for it. People don't do it enough. I think. Joey, have, did you ever na name your car? Absolutely not. Okay. Naming your car, I'm against it. Uh, because, look, 
We should have a rule that if you name your car, it should be painted on the back of the trunk like a boat. <laughs> so I can know whether you're cool or not based on just the name of your car. And sorry, Sean, if Der Commissar was painted on the back of your car, <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, that guy's not my friend. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, the names never stick because of that. But you're, but it's kind of like the vanity plate. Uh, it should be like the boat where it's it's... It's painted in a way that uh, describes you. Uh, Because I do think... Okay, look. I want to take these one at a time. Naming a car, bad. Mm -hmm. Naming a boat, you gotta do it, right? Like, that's good. But especially because I like to walk around a marina and I can tell, like, that guy's cool, that guy's not cool. That guy cheats on his wife. There's a story behind (laughs) a boat name. But naming a sword... I think if you name your own sword, it's not cool. The sword uh-huh. has to come with the name. Oh. Like a right. wizard has to name it, or a fairy or something. Like, can you imagine it being like like a jerk walking around like, oh, this is Prince Harry or whatever. <laughs> like, you're the, 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 the guys at the tavern would throw you out. Oh, I mean, like, especially post uh, spare coming out. Yeah. Now, now you got to rename. You got to rename your sword because he's embarrassed the monarchy. Yeah. You're like, this is a, this is a sword that lives in uh, a gated community, in San Diego. <laughs> there's no, there's no way. No one there's... in Montecito owns a sword. I guarantee you that they maybe have like a letter opener that is in like the the shape of a tiny rapier. Yeah. But they're not they're not a sword. Type but yeah, there's there. no way like. Napoleon probably named his sword, and they all made fun of him behind his back. They were like, this little jerk. Yeah, it was that, that was because he was hear? short. Not, not, not. His sword name you think was that, super That's why he guy. had the complex? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, the dick extender. Yeah. <laughs> I just think, like, a sword name, you can't give your own sword a name. And also, I was thinking, it made me start thinking about this, what's the modern day sword? And then mm. I was thinking of cowboys, okay, they're little revolvers, those were their swords. Ours mm-hmm. are all iPhones. Should we be naming our, should we be having, uh, like... Oh, great question. Should, should we be having wizards name our iPhones? <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, like, when you, um, when you airdrop something, mm-hmm. it doesn't just say, like, iPhone. Right. right. <laughs> Matt's iPhone. So talking about boat names, I thought it might be fun to match the names of celebrities with the names of their yachts. This is Ooh, great. Matt, okay. this is one of the best games <laughs> I've ever seen. Okay, right. so on the, the left side here, you have four names of yachts. The Vendetta, mm. the Privacy, the Flag, the Seven. And on the right, you have four celebrities. David Beckham, Tommy Hilfiger, Tiger Woods, and Billy Joel. Now I'm going to say there's two that are I wouldn't say obvious, but you can reason them out based on mm-hmm. something about the celebrity and something about the name of the the yacht. Okay. Um, so again, Vendetta, Privacy, Flag Seven, and the celebrities David Beckham. And to be honest, in the listicle, it did say David and Victoria Beckham. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I, I don't want to erase Victoria in all this, but the clue is related to David Beckham. Tommy Hilfiger, Tiger Woods, Billy Joel. So have at it. Where, where, where do you think matches which? I know what Tiger Woods is yacht, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to disqualify myself here. No, no, no. no, no, no that's, that's knowledge. Part of, no, that's, that's part good. of the game. Oh, I believe Tiger Woods uh, named his yacht Privacy. Yeah, that was going to be my guess. Yeah. That's 100% correct, because there was a time when he needed it. All right. My guess for Flag, it's so strange to name your yacht Flag. My guess would be Tommy Hilfiger because so many of his uh, mm-hmm. clothing was red, white, and blue. Yeah. That's right. And the, the logo mm-hmm. is a flag. So you got the two. Oh, no, no, you didn't. There's one more that, uh, that I think you can get um, by reasoning. Okay, Billy Joel is the angriest man alive, so I'm going to guess Vendetta is Billy that's, Joel. That's right. He, he, he came up with that name when he was riding, riding his motorcycle uh-huh. in the rain. Have you so, ever seen that clip of him screaming at people to stop lighting the audience, Matt? He's in the Soviet what do you mean? Union. Oh, like... Uh... He's in the Soviet Union performing, and... He, they are not enjoying his concert, and he just starts screaming, Stop lighting the audience! Just let me do my show! And then he kicks his own guitar player. 
It's amazing. <laughs> I highly recommend looking up Billy Joel stop lighting the audience whenever you get a chance. <laughs> I do. That's that's his we'll do it live is stop lighting yeah. the audience. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. And, and that's what made the Berlin Wall come down? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Was Seven is like that, like David Beckham's kid's name too? <laughs> uh, it's possible, but... Um, from what I read in the listicle, seven was David Beckham's jersey number. So I thought that that might have been gettable if you knew anything about football. All right. Well, that's um, some celebrities in there. Terrible names for their I I honestly thought they were going to be funnier. I couldn't find any ones that were like, like Paul Allen Mm -hmm. um, was Octopus. Yeah. Yeah. But Paul Allen is not around anymore, right? So that's a real villains. That's like. That's how you know, like, there was some bad stuff going on there, uh, because that is a what a villain names their boat, is uh, Octopus. Um, Tillman Fertitta is so uncreative, both of his mega yachts have the same name. Which is? Sean, do you remember? Boardwalk. Boardwalk, yeah, they're <laughs> all loves- named. He couldn't even <laughs> name one boardwalk in one park place. <laughs> so it's Boardwalk 1, Boardwalk 2? I don't even think they have numbers. No, wow. they're just called boardwalk. Wow, they're just both boardwalk. He likes wharf yeah. related businesses and vice. Yeah. No shit. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Huge boardwalk empire fan. Uh, okay, 62% of people say naming an inanimate object is good. Wow. Um, though, JD, either did you say where, where you were? Uh, on that you one? know. Uh, did you I name, s- you used to have a, a, a mini, an Austin Mini Cooper. Did you name it Matt? <laughs> I did not. Oh, I did not okay. name that's a, because you know offensive. why? Because I was leasing that car. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't name you, that's a rule. You cannot name a leased car. If, that's right. That's right. If you purchased it and you're financing it, that's okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, sixty two percent of people say it's good. Um, all right, let's do let's do one more before we get to the segments. And this might be the saddest. Is this good question we've ever asked? Mm-hmm. So try, try not to get upset. But Diego J asks. Telling people that they forgot your birthday. Is this good? <laughs> so someone didn't remember, and then you go up to them and inform them, hey, you forgot my special day. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, what do you think about that? Is that something you would ever do? Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, except I do, well, there's a caveat to that. Last year, I called my mom on my birthday to tell her, like, to, like, check because I didn't hear from her. I think if it's your mom, it's okay to be like, you forgot my birthday. <laughs> Anyone else, not okay. Not cool. Not good. Because what, like, not only are you ruining your own birthday by being a <laughs> pathetic little boy about it. Um <laughs> Like, you're that worried about people remembering your birthday? You're an adult. Hmm. What did you think was going to happen on your birthday? Like, oh, people were going to come to the bar? Who cares? (laughs) We're adults. We can go to the bar on any day. (laughs) But but don't you think that people, if they find out, like, three months later... When they're cel- when you're celebrating their birthday, mm-hmm. and then it's like they're trying to remember, like, oh, what did we do for your birthday? And they're like, oh shit, I forgot your birthday. They're gonna feel guilty. So you might be doing them a favor by subtly informing them but that they've no one made actually an error. Feels guilty they for don't. forgetting someone's birthday. That's like feel guilty for ten seconds, and then they immediately forget when that person's birthday is again. We cannot be expected as a society. <laughs> to remember anyone's birthday unless they came out of our genes or yeah. we adopted them. Mm-hmm. Like, if you are raising your child or married to the person, fine. Those are the only birthdays you should be you should be forced to remember. Uh, There's too many things to remember in this world. Counterpoint, we should also remember Jesus' birthday. Okay, <laughs> that's an easy one to remember. <laughs> Though, though, honestly, I know the day, but is it zero or <laughs> right <Yeah>. one? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's technically negative one. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Um, JD, 
Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the heyday of Facebook, when you could put like your mm-hmm. birthday and then it would broadcast to everyone, hey, it's your birthday. Yeah. You you hid your birthday so that no one would wish you happy birthday. Is yeah. That when I remembered, uh, that's what I I would I would definitely. Oh, you mean you would have it on there and then like a week before take yeah, it off? Yeah, yeah, and then I ended up just taking it off altogether. But uh, there were a couple of, couple of years I forgot, and I just got a flood of happy birthdays. I was like, oh, where were you last year? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you agree that it does feel nice when people remember your birthday? No, I mean, uh, I guess I, I'm I'm very much like go one step further. Don't tell anybody it's your birthday, as you you mm-hmm. know, as you just said. Like I am a, an adult man. I do not celebrate my birthday. It's not mm-hmm. a time of happiness at this point in my life. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't need to tell anybody. It's, it's JD. Yeah. Two years ago, I made the mistake of getting my hair cut on my thirty seventh birthday, and you know when you're thinking about getting older, you know it's not a good idea. Staring at your aging face in the mirror in yeah. silence for oh, an yeah. hour, oh, like yeah. I literally felt like. I at one point I had like a single <laughs> tear roll down my face. Yeah, but uh, on the bright side, um, doesn't supercuts give you a free haircut on your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> so that was a freebie. That's a freebie, Joey. Uh, Sean, what do you think here? Would you ever tell someone that they forgot your birthday? So I sort of think the power move might be what JD does, but then the day after your birthday, your status on Facebook is reminding people that they forgot your birthday, even though <laughs> yeah. there's no reminder. Um, yeah, it's true. The, the modern move now is because Instagram doesn't have our birthdays on it, or at least it doesn't alert us that it's someone's birthday. So now the move is like, you have to get one person to do a story saying it's your birthday, yeah. and then you uh, repost that so that it's basically... Yeah. An advertisement saying, "Hey, just so you know, it is my birthday." It is my. So I didn't put it on Maine. Well wishes coming through. I, yeah, exactly. It's um, horny for birthday on Maine. I have one friend who I'm not particularly close to. I mean, we didn't. No, no, nothing happened. We were just friends in high school, and now we're older. But um, he has remembered that I have the same birthday as Garfield the cat, beloved. <laughs> comics master mm-hmm. so every time uh-huh. he'll look at the comics and garfield always does a birthday strip usually he's like mm-hmm. maybe eats the cake without but like marilyn monroe <laughs> yeah. uh, it's a birthday strip um <laughs> well so Anyways, garfield so is to... doing the instagram thing garfield <laughs> is pointing out that it's his own birthday so people wish him a happy birthday he con- i mean the creator jim davis creator of garfield is doing that anyway i always get a text message because he is alerted by garfield to my birthday (laughs) wow so it it must be a rough year whenever your birthday falls on a monday oh oh, it's the worst (laughs) (laughs) i shouldn't have given up lasagna for new year's Um, I have the same birthday as Kathy, actually. Oh, ack, <laughs> ack, 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 ack. Uh, 86% of people say telling people they forgot your birthday is not good, so it looks like we are all aligned on that one. Uh, guys, it's very exciting. It's time for our newest segment on Is This Good? It's time for Pick Your Poison. Here's how it works. I'm going to give you four related options that are all bad, and you have to pick your poison. So in other words, you have to pick whichever one you consider the least worst option. But there is a right answer. So this Sunday, (laughs) Super Bowl 57, am I right, boys? Oh, yeah. We got the Chiefs. (laughs) We got the Eagles. We got Mahomes. We got... Hurts? Hurts. Yeah. Okay. I was I was, I was waiting with bated breath. I was going to be like, does he know that he was quarterback? <laughs> He's going to be okay, shocked so by today's... what goes on on third down. <laughs> uh, why don't they just go for it? Uh, today's category is people to sit next to you at a Super Bowl party. So you will have to share a couch with one of these people. Okay. You got to pick your poison. Okay. Number one. Mitch, 
Okay, do you want to sit next to Mitch? Mitch keeps calling the game the Superb Owl. And every time he says it, he makes prolonged eye contact with you, so you're forced to laugh. And when you do laugh, he says, you know, Super Bowl is trademarked. That's why some brands have to call it the big game. Okay, so that's Mitch. Okay, or do you want to sit next to Kyle? Kyle, who refers to himself as the Spice Lord, brings his Hot Ones branded pack of hot sauces and keeps daring you to try something called Carolina Reaper Rectum Wrecker. And when you refuse, he calls you Ned Blanders and makes you watch a video of him doing the Packy One Chip Challenge from 2017. Okay, that's Kyle. Or do you want to sit next to Hunter? Hunter wants to engage you in a conversation about all the crypto ads at last year's Super Bowl and how that should have been a sign to everyone that the market had peaked and then offers a long <laughs> anecdote about how in 1929, Joseph Kennedy sold his portfolio before Black Friday because he knew there was a bubble when a shoe shine offered him a stock tip. You see, the shoe shine offering him the stock tip was the crypto ads on the Super Bowl because it was a sign that it was... It was too in the in the popular consciousness, mm -hmm. and it was time to get out. Or you could sit next to Bryce. Bryce keeps singing, fly, Eagles, fly, after every big play, and flaps his arms in front of you, so you can't even see the TV. And when he's done, he turns to you and says, hey, today, Sundays are for the boys. Okay, so that's Bryce. Uh, so you got to pick your poison. Joey, we'll start with you. Do you want to sit next to Mitch, Superb L Mitch, Spice Lord Kyle, Crypto Hunter, or Sundays are for the boys, Bryce. See, I it's not Bryce. Okay, um, I'll tell you that much. Too much. Uh, look, too, I'm a I'm a male. I'm a masculine male, as everyone mm -hmm. can see in here, based on my <laughs> high pitched voice. And um, uh, but um, I just can't handle that kind of energy. Like, get out of my face. I Like, if it was just the Fly Eagles Fly, but Sundays are for the boys is too far. That's mm. that's one step too, too uh, much for me. Mm -hmm. Kyle, the Spice Lord, I feel like I could <laughs> maybe... I like food. We could maybe... There's maybe something, but I don't want to watch a video. Uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, the Super Bowl's on. I can't watch a video <laughs> of you eating a hot chip. Um, super, super Owl Guy. <sighs> super Owl is at least better than Sports Ball. It's better uh -huh. than a Sports Ball Guy. It's one yeah. step up. <laughs> um, Hunter, like, if he were a normal crypto guy... The answer would be no. I can't handle that. But he's giving me an interesting fact, at least. <laughs> like there's some, like there is some historical knowledge going on there. I might learn mm -hmm. one other interesting thing, but I think I'm going super bow guy, Mitch. Just because, as a rule, I don't want to be around crypto guys. Uh, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. So you're gonna learn some facts um, yeah. about, about about the finer points of trademarking. I know nerds. I can talk about him about Marvel comics or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Uh, he definitely <laughs> wants to talk about uh, how James Gunn's gonna fix the DCU with you. So get get ready for that. Uh, Sean, who who are you sitting next to? I gotta say, uh, Superb Owl is completely intolerable. I'm I I know he seems. <laughs> Like, he's not really doing anything, but he's doing the worst thing. And I just, I cannot, with that repeated pun, um, I just, I just cannot eat spicy things. Like, I don't really mind that Kyle's trying to engage things, but I would just spend the whole time saying, like, I'm not very good at eating spicy foods. Very good at eating spicy foods. Just some hiccups. I have seen Sean immediately get the hiccups when he ate something too spicy. Mm, yeah. Like a cartoon character. You expect a bubble to come out yeah. of his mouth. It's like I'm yeah, a and Kyle's definitely idiot. calling you a pussy if yeah. you hiccup. It happened right when I moved to Los Angeles, too. So I every time I went to a taco truck, it was like, oh, this is mild salsa, too. Oh, gosh. Um... I think I'm sitting by Bryce though, because Bryce, I mean, he's he's a cool guy. If he knows that Saturdays are for the boys, <laughs> this is a cool guy to hang out with. Probably got a lot of cool <laughs> high fives, uh, and he's probably gonna try to show me pictures of his girlfriend wearing like a, a tube top and being like, "Sick, right? She looks sick, bro." 
And who doesn't want that? <laughs> he's like, he's, it's going to start, it's going to go, he's going, hey, bro, you ever heard of the chive? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, then he's going to show you which list his girlfriend made. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so you can't handle spice food. You're not sitting next to Kyle. Uh, he, he, he's going to engage you in a long conversation about the Scoville scale. Mm -hmm. And, and he's probably going to be like, you probably, you probably couldn't even handle five Scoville units, bro. <laughs> and that's going to be embarrassing for you. So, so you're choosing Bryce, uh, yeah. JD, who are you choosing to sit next to? Yeah, I'm going to take Bryce, too. Uh, oh, wow. For, yeah, for basically the same reasons. I can, you know, I can bro down with the best of them, and I'll, I'll ignore No, all first the... of all, no, you can't. I know. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> I can on fake the, it. On the last, sh or, or maybe two shows ago, you were complaining about how when you, in the South, you live in Atlanta, when you yeah. go out with your wife and a couple, you yeah. get upset because your wife and... The other person's wife are like talking about things you want to talk about, yeah. like the Real Housewives and mm -hmm. Andy Cohen, and you're stuck talking about like the dogs, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, and you don't know what the hell you're talking about. So yeah, I, I would okay. say you cannot bro down with the. Best All right. So that was a lie. That was a lie. But <laughs> I hate Mitch and Kyle and Hunter so much. <laughs> and Bryce is at least into the game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That is like, a fair yeah. point. Watching yeah. a game with somebody who's into it is much more enjoyable than having spicy food shoved down my throat or bad puns. The superb owl pun. Ugh. It's the worst. It I is can't. bad. It's bad. So, yeah. Give me Bryce. Give me Bryce. <laughs> okay. So, we got JD and Sean going with Bryce. Joey, you chose Mitch. Is that correct? I did, yeah. Okay. Well, Joey, you got the right answer. The answer is Mitch because... At least he doesn't seem like an asshole. He just mm -hmm. seems like he read a joke on the internet and he's excited to tell you about it. He doesn't know that you've heard it. He doesn't know there was an episode of What We Do in the Shadows based around the, the pun superb owl. Um, he just thinks he's being clever. He's there to help. He might tell you that the commercials are the best part of the game. He might say that, mm -hmm. but that's okay. He's uh, just a nice guy. You're you're totally wrong about this, Matt. That's his best bit. Yeah. And it's going to go down from there. It's all night you're going to have to deal with this guy. Yeah. This game's 4 hours long. I I like Mitch. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, there's only one more thing to do, and that's play subjective trivia. <laughs> So subjective trivia is just like regular trivia, except only I know the answer. But guys, sometimes when guests are on and a specific question must be asked, this turns into objective trivia. And, and today is one of those days because you guys host the podcast Round Ball Rock, as I said. Obviously, Round Ball Rock is named after the theme song for the NBA on NBC. If somehow you don't know that song, that's the... Okay. Round Ball Rock was written by, as many people know, John Tesh. Now, Mitch probably is going to tell you, did you know Round Ball Rock was written by John Tesh? You're like, yeah, every, <laughs> Mitch everyone. Doesn't, no, Mitch doesn't everyone know that knows. song was called Round Ball Rock mm. is the problem. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so today's question. So there is a correct answer. JD, would you mind putting up the slide? I need you to tell me, which of these is not the name of a John Tesh album currently available on Spotify? Oh, wow. So which one is not? Okay, so here are your choices. Sax on the beach. Sax all night. Sax by the fire. Oral sax. Mm -hmm. God of wonders. So four of these are real John Tesh albums that are currently available on Spotify. One is not. These are albums or songs? Albums. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, Sean, you could start this time. Which do you think is not a John Tesh album currently available on Spotify. I think these are all very um, PG, except for one. That the John Tesh doesn't do yeah. PG-13 with oral sex. And he's like a tall, new age guy. Obviously, he believes in at least a God of Wonders, if not multiple God of Wonders. <laughs> so I'm saying oral sex <laughs> is the exception here. Huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's, you think that's too blue, even though that is the way you play a sax with your mouth. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's so true. in a sense, it's the least dirty. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think people want to. <laughs> feel like I don't want people imagining that giant face. Like you don't want to think about mm. that part of it. I think with him. <laughs> okay, so so Joey, what do you think? You think this man uh, I would think name three she... albums? Sax, <laughs> you know. Yes, I think things? Sean is on the correct track here because I happen to know that um, John Tesh is a, a god guy, mm-hmm. and Oral Sax. Those those god guys don't believe in uh, mouth play. In the first place, so they wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> the, G- Jesus doesn't do tongue, um, so I'm gonna say it's oral sex um, as well. Okay, interesting. Uh, JD, any, any differing opinion, or are you I, also I going do, oral sex? I do. I think that uh, I think that oral sex is just too obvious. I think it's I think it's sex on the beach, mm. <laughs> just because that's also the name of a drink. And if you say he's a, a God people are more into oral sex than they are into drinking. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> so I will say it reminds me, have you guys seen the title and cover of the new Smokey Robinson album? <laughs> yeah, I have. Oh, I have not. I don't, it's I called forget, Gasms, JD. Gasms. <laughs> oh, my God. It has like a 100-year-old man, just his face. <laughs> Gasms. <laughs> yeah, but it's a very s- stretched... Yeah, <laughs> face, um, gasms. Okay, gasms. so JD, what are you? What are you going? You're going I'm sax going with on sax the beach? on the beach. Is it does not belong in this? Okay. Well, the answer, Sean and Joey, you are correct. The answer yeah. is oral sax. Now, in in coming up, first of all, I, I sax on the beach. I'm not going to say it's a good pun, but at least it is a real pun. Mm-hmm. Like sex on the beach is a thing, and it's a drink. Sax by the fire, okay. Sex mm-hmm. by the fire, I guess. Sure. Sax all night? Who says sex all night? Like, that's not a phrase. <laughs> it's not an expression. <laughs> that's not why really. I thought uh, maybe... I was... Okay, here's... I was thinking casual sax. Would you have been more likely to vote for that one? Yes. Yeah. Okay, maybe yeah. I should go with casual that seems, that seems You got too fun. horny, Matt. Yeah. Too yeah. horny. Yeah. <laughs> Your pun was too horny. <laughs> My pun was too horny. I also thought of sax bomb or I want your sax. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, That's good. Yeah. That's a Yeah. Good okay. Sax you know what? That's on me. Too. That's on me. I just yeah. thought that because you do play the saxophone with your mouth, that oral sax might have flown under the radar. But the most it important thing. It did for thing, me. It did for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, after I looked all these up, I had this thought. I was like, well, this all makes sense. All these sax puns. It is John Tesh. And then I was like, hold on a second. John Tesh doesn't play sax. That's yeah. the other thing I was going to mention. Uh, he's a, he plays the piano. He plays the piano. Kenny yeah. G plays the sax. Uh-huh. John Tesh plays the piano. So I don't, I don't understand what all these sax-related <laughs> um, puns are. And, and anytime John Tesh does come up, I am obligated to say, as Sean, you mentioned, John Tesh is enormous. He's six foot six. Mm-hmm. I bet you didn't know that, Mitch. Uh, and I bet you definitely didn't know this, that... We were at the Grand Canyon in 1993. We were walking through the visitor center when my mom is knocked over by a giant man. Giant man says, oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. She looks up. That giant man is John Tesh. Wow. Can you believe it? It's amazing. Thank you. It's a great story. God of wonders. (laughs) Yeah, God of wonders. Thank you. you. That's what they call a closer. (laughs) Uh, Joey and Sean, thanks so much for being on the show. Where can people find you and where can people find Round Ball Rock? Uh, You can find Round Ball Rock on pretty much everywhere you can find a podcast. Uh, I don't know, and probably other places. The dark (laughs) web, I don't know. I don't know what they do on there. Um, The Silk Road? Yeah. (laughs) Uh, and you can follow me on Twitter at Joey Devine. That's D E V I N E. Normally, I would say Frankie Muniz if this were my podcast, and then read a very sad tweet. But I'm actually going to give my own Twitter handle this time, Matt. That's how much I respect you. Okay. Well, hey, um. <laughs> oh, give, give him those follows. Stop. Stop giving those follows to Frankie Muniz. He doesn't need him. Okay. <laughs> he's in. A, he's driving very fast in a car right now. He doesn't have time to read your tweets. Uh, Sean, Sean, what about you? Uh, I'm at Sean Keen on Twitter. S e a n k 
K-E-A-N-E. And then on Instagram, you can follow me. I'm Jorts Center. Uh, I also write about the Warriors for Golden State of Mind. <laughs> I write about the San Francisco Giants. And then uh, I write about basketball on Yard Barker, too. And then you can see me do stand-up in the Bay Area. I don't really particularly have anything booked right now. Check the site, because when I ever listen to Round Ball Rock, you are always pushing dates. So I'm a little, Sean, little offended. Sean rises and grinds, uh, for sure. <laughs> okay, good. I, uh, we all, Grustlers only on this podcast. So I'm, glad, I'm glad you guys stepped up. Uh, remember, if you have topics, tweet them to me at StartersMatt or email us at isthisgoodpod at gmail.com. Rate us on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe on YouTube. Guys, again, thanks so much for being here. This was great. Uh, thanks to JD. Thanks for coming on. Thanks to you for listening. For everyone, I'm Matt Austin, and this was good. We'll see you next week. Bye.